One with the Shadows by Space Paladin 15 When had an Imperial General ever lost a battle, let alone an entire fleet? We had powerful technology in our arsenal, and masterful tacticians among our ranks. Nobody could rival our martial prowess. Or so he had thought. So how had a lot of primitive, quibbling apes managed to defeat us? A few of the other generals were buying General Zaki's ghost stories, but as Emperor, I had the ultimate say. There were two more likely scenarios in my mind, neither of which reflected well on his Zaki. Either he was utterly incompetent and had been bested by the monkeys without inflicting a single enemy casualty and was covering his ass with ridiculous stories. Or he was a traitor who had conspired with the enemy and walked the fleet into a trap. As such, it was my decree that he was to be hanged for treason. I reconvened the generals, deciding I would sit on the planning session this time. We would regroup, and we would get the conquest of Earth right this time. I expected tactical suggestions, but everyone was quiet. It seemed that none of them wanted to volunteer themselves for deployment by devising a plan. That fool Zaki had gotten into their heads with his tall tails. If I don't start hearing some ideas in the next few seconds, I'm going to string all of you up. I snarled. General Sem cleared her throat nervously. My lord, what if we just invade a different planet? There are certainly other planets, I don't see why this one is so important. I glared at her. It's not that Earth is important. It's the message we'd be sending to our other subjects by admitting defeat. The humans must be crushed and reminded of our superiority. You're right, your highness, she replied. What if we try talking to them? Ask them to surrender? If we are superior as you say, there's no need to waste any more resources on this. I drummed my fingers on the table, considering her proposal. Indeed, we are the finest army in the galaxy. The humans will be cowering and begging for mercy at the mention of our might. Open communications lines. I'll speak to them myself. I glanced at the view screen as our technicians established communications with Terran Command. A grey-haired, uniformed human appeared on screen. His expression seemed rather smug, which I did not like at all. This was clearly no ethereal wraith. This was a real, corporeal being. This is Colonel Kelly of the Terran Space Force. I take it you got our message? A mischievous light danced to the man's eyes. Thanks for the ships, by the way. They'll make great additions to our scrapyards. I sprung to my feet, outraged by his mocking tone. You wretched humans will pay dearly for what you have done. Surrender now, or face the full wrath of the Empire. Colonel Kelly sighed. You guys really want round two? Well, don't say we didn't warn you. The human officer seemed more annoyed than concerned as he signaled something to the people behind him. I was struggling to rein in my anger. Never before had anyone been so dismissive of our forces. Such arrogance could not be tolerated. After we conquered their world, I would order that we raise their major cities. The Empire needed to make an example out of these Terran pests. You're bluffing. If you were really so confident, you would have struck back already. I responded. Colonel Kelly shrugged. There are people who want us to blow you off the map, but most of us don't like killing civilians. We just needed time to weigh the odds and decide on the best course of action. And what is that exactly? Well, humanity just wants to be left alone. And it seems that the quickest way to do that is to eliminate you. Ha <laughs> You dare threaten the Emperor. My security fleet would obliterate you before you got within a paw sec of this city. Hmm. Yes. Your security fleet. Why didn't we think of that? I wasn't too sure about human voice inflection, but the last query came off as sarcastic in nature. If this talk was nothing but bluster, the colonel needed a raise. His acting was marvelous. A quick glance around the room told me that his flippancy had further unsettled my generals, who had been listening in. While I was confident this man was just posturing, 
I decided to look through our intelligence on the Terran military anyway. It would not hurt to prepare countermeasures if they were really planning to attack our capital city. I thumbed through the official dossier on Earth. There was surprising little information available about them. Their government consisted of a coalition of regional states, often rendered immobile by political disagreement. They had one extraplanetary colony, the fourth planet in their system, which only had a few small settlements. None of that was particularly impressive. But we had zero information about their military capabilities. That seemed impossible. Either the Terrans were hiding their fleet, or anyone who had seen it did not live to tell about it. The only witness testimony we had were from pirates and a now failed general claiming ghost ships lurked in their system. Perhaps that was their play, to scare us off with mind games, rumors, and trickery. The entire Terran populace was less than the amount of conscripted soldiers we had. Regardless of what weaponry they possessed, we could outmatch them based on sheer numbers alone. Nice palace, by the way, Colonel Kelly remarked, snapping me out of my thoughts. Finally, a comment that conveyed some level of respect. At least the humans could appreciate some of the Empire's creations. I offered a slight smile. Thank you. Quite a fine work, Flahir Engineering. It's a shame you can only see this room here. The exterior is absolutely stunning. You're mistaken. I can see the outside just fine. Glass roofs, silver arches, lots of statues. I froze. There was no way that the humans knew what the Grand Palace looked like from past experience. No Terran delegation had ever visited our sector. His wording also implied that he was viewing the palace from an aerial vantage at this moment. But not a single intrusion alarm had been triggered, nor had a single patrol ship sent out a warning. How could they have gotten past our defenses? Colonel Kelly chuckled at my reaction. Look up, Emperor. We could just end you now, but I want your final sight to be our ships. I gazed up at the transparent ceiling. All I could see was the empty ember sky and sunlight pouring in through the glass. But the serene view proved to be a mirage. Hundreds of fighters appeared out of thin air, as though conjured by magic. Glimpsing the fleet hovering over the palace, I knew that my demise was imminent. Alarms finally sounded as the Terran ships made themselves visible, and our commanders tried to scramble a response. I knew that it was too late. Their rail guns were already powered up and aimed at our headquarters. Any last words? Asked the colonel. Perhaps you'll cry and plead for your life as your general did. I doubt it will work, but you're welcome to try. I stared blankly at the gloating human officer. I took a deep breath, feeling the air fill my lungs for one of the last times. Collecting my thoughts was not an easy task under the circumstances, but I needed to maintain my composure. I would not give the humans the satisfaction of seeing my fear. An honorable death was all that I could hope for. The Emperor bows to no one. My voice was calm and level, despite the terror coursing through my veins. I only wish to know how you did this, to understand those who bested us before I meet my end. Colonel Kelly's eyes darkened. Our secret? We are one with the shadows. Those were the last words I heard, as a blinding flash washed away my existence.